In this tutorial, we will continue with the assembly design workbench. There are two kinds of assembly design approaches. One is the bottom-up and one is the top-down. In bottom-up approach, we have all the basic components that we need to assemble. We create it in the part design, we save it on our local hard drive, and later we come to the assembly and we assemble it one by one as we have done in our previous tutorial. This particular split muff coupling is being assembled as we have seen in our previous tutorial using the bottom-up approach. Now we will see how we can go about the top-down approach. Top-down approach means we design the components that we need to assemble on the go. So this is pretty interesting as we go to the product and we get inside the product and we right click and go for a new part here in the components and once we have a part and if we double click as you can see all the assembly tools are right here aligned and if I double click we change the part mode we could also use the wireframe mode in order to create whatever we need to create here so let's go ahead and create a simple model which we can assemble in this tutorial. So I'll go to the XY plane and start sketching it. And I will create a simple model. A simple model here. I'll do a pad. Click on OK. So that's our first part. Now I will double click here and go for the next part and you can click no here and double click on this part so what you're exactly doing is you have this part being created here and then you're inserting the next part remember that the new part that you have created on is not related to this part so you will understand it on the go so double click on the second part so you can see that all the tools we have here changed to the part design workbench. Select the XY plane similarly and create a circle and use a pad. Increase the pad size. Click on OK and click here and again give sketch to give more detail for our part this is what we are doing here and again give a pad here so you could give a thickness of 20 mm that will be fine now we have another part created so double click on this product to come to the product design workbench now now we can see that two parts are created and they are different parts. To see that, go for the Edit, Move, Manipulate. As I've explained about the Manipulate tool before, you could use it to move it and separate it. So there is, as of now, there is no constraint being created here. So while I assemble this, I will explain you the different tools which I haven't explained in my previous tutorial and that would complete the complete explanation of our assembly design workbench so firstly as i've said before you need to fix one of the component so before doing that before doing that fix i would like to explain you about the fix together constraint so if you try to move manipulate the component with respect to constraint try to move you can see that these two objects doesn't have any relations right now. So I'll click on OK. And now I will go for a fix together. Let's see how this tool works. Go for the fix together and click on these two tools and click on OK. So what this constraint does is this two objects are being fixed together with respect to whatever distance or measurements they have. Now if you try to go ahead and manipulate this tool with respect to constraint, if I try to move it, you can see that the first part A comes with part B. So that's pretty interesting. Now, now let's 
delete this component here and uh, delete that constraint not the component and now fix the first component and now let's see how we can assemble this whole component using a quick constraint this is pretty handy constra constraint constraining tool so click on that and click on the both of these axes which you can see it's appearing when it's once you hover your mouse and once you click you can see that a coincidence constraint has been created so this is automatic constraining and this creates constraints according to the situation or the uh, the edges or the circumference or whatever we show to this to this particular tool now if i click on update edit update you can see that the component goes and aligns itself to that particular location now let's see how we can use an offset command or the offset constraint click on the offset constraint and click on the two faces right here and as we can see a constraint has been created so we specify for example we need a clearance of 5 mm you click on ok and as we have done before go to the update and you see, as you can see this is brought together with clearance of 5 mm here so that's about the offset constraint now let's delete that offset constraint and put the object back All right. I want to show you one more thing. Go to the move manipulate. Make sure that your with respect to constraint is on. And if you try to move it, you cannot move it. You cannot move it. The only way you can move it is in the C axis. And the reason is because you have a constant constraint being constraining the two objects here. And if you try to rotate this, you can see that it rotates because it is with respect to the z axis but if you try to rotate it with respect to the y axis it doesn't do that uh, let's go ahead and click on ok and let's see how the quick constraint helps us to constrain or bring together these two objects i'll select the two surfaces and automatically a contact constraint is being applied the same quick constraint was used to apply a coincidence constraint as i've said before this tool works according to the situations. We will continue with the explanation of uh, assembly design workbench in our next tutorial. Thank you so much.